morning. I'm going to be answering a viewer question. Got a letter in the mail from a faithful viewer, and uh, she wanted to know if the government will confiscate precious metals. Well, that's kind of like saying, will the mafia rob uh, somebody at gunpoint? <laughs> okay. Uh, the government has a long and storied history of drug running, gun running, illegal gun running, um, you know, uh, all sorts of uh, actions in other countries using our military and things and and um, the criminals in Washington DC are capable of anything and of course um, they have confiscated gold I think it's three different times the most well-known of course being in 1933 uh, after the stock market crashed in 1929 then they blamed private ownership of gold because they had gold coins back then as regular currency. According to our constitution, you're supposed to have gold and silver coins uh, <clears throat> and to a much lesser extent copper, but um, they confiscated because they said, well, you know, this is throwing off the dollar and we have to, you know, make sure that we can do price controls and whatever other things with the economy. So yes, the government has confiscated gold. But understand something, when I say confiscation, I don't mean necessarily that they're coming to the, your door, you know, beating your door down with a SWAT team or something because they know that you have some gold coins and they just come in and hold you at gunpoint and take the gold and run. They'd probably like to do that, but uh, they don't do that. Okay, what they mean is they would say it's a mandatory buyback. We will give you a certain amount for your gold but you are required. According to our records, you have X amount of gold or something. There are ways to get around that too, which I'll talk about. But, um, so please understand that, that they can't just come and say, we're taking the gold. All right, I mean, technically they can't do that. <laughs> um, with the government, almost anything's possible. But let's, I just want to go over a scripture here. I always like to put some scripture in with this, just to, um, people would say, well, why would you have gold? I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Well, there's a principle in Scripture where um, many times there's a spiritual truth taught through something that's a physical reality. Okay? Um, something, it will be, um, there's an illustration that's used um, about, you know, you can, like I'll give you an example. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Well, that's a sort of a philosophical truth, so to speak, but it's based on something that's real in the physical world. All right, well, Scripture does the same thing many times. And here's one of these. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. Now, here's the physical truth coming up. Okay, um... For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. All right, he's talking about a physical inheritance. Now he's talking spiritually in the context of that passage. Um, you can see I've put some new barricades up here, by the way. I'm not going to go in front of them because they have cameras on them, and I don't want to have my uh, get on the camera there. There and over here is another one, and they have solar-powered lights on them, and everything else upping security here um but that's another issue isn't it um but i've been wanting to do that for a long time so i finally had the time to do it but the principle there is that we as parents i'm not supposed to just say it's all about heaven everything is just spiritual no it's a righteous just thing for me to have money for my son for me to leave something for my son um <clears throat> one of the things that helped me to actually start my ministry uh, many years ago um was my father uh he actually left he said that he said i don't want to just wait till i die to give you inheritance so he gave each of his five children um money from his you know retirement uh, or, or in some of his investments that he had, he gave us each a small amount and said, I want to see you spend this on something that, you know, pay off bills or buy a car or whatever you want to do with this money. 
It was a very kind thing that he did. And I used that money to buy my first video editing computer, which I still use to this day. Uh, it's, I think, 15 years later or something. I'm still using the same computer. Um, I like Windows 7. I don't like the whole modern Windows 10, 11 thing. But I bought my first computer and I bought my first camera. And um, with that, I was able to really start making a lot better video than what I had been doing in the past. So uh, my, the inheritance that my father passed down to me was an important thing. And um, I'm, I will be eternally grateful to him for what he did. Um, it's a righteous, just, just thing, in other words, for a parent to lay up something for their child. Now, how do you do that? That's the, the real question. Um, this is my land that I'm standing on right now. This can go to my son someday, certainly. Um, land ha holds value to it. But, um, you know, there could be things that could come in and, and whatever else. I mean, you could have anything on this earth is, is, there's no guaranteed wealth or something on this earth. You have to remember that, that principle as well, too. Uncertain riches the Bible talks about. But, you know, we could have a forest fire here and, and all the timber is completely destroyed. Um, there could be, uh, you know, some kind of war or something like that. And, and all of uh, New England, where I'm at, um, is given to the, you know, to bricks or something like that. And they, they try to steal my land from me or something. But Lord only knows. So you can't say, well, you know, I wouldn't put my money into precious metals because it's not secure or something. Well, precious metals are a lot more secure than many other things. If you just keep your money in the bank and say, well, that'll be fine, um, well, they can do bail-ins. They have legislation to bail in and take your money, okay? Um, that's a problem. And even if they don't bail in and take your money, well, you're, the cash is being devalued all the time. I mean, right now it's uh, $1 trillion more in debt every 100 days. Good, uh, real good government. That's why I say you can't trust this government anymore, All right? Uh, they've been very untrustworthy for a while. But a few things I want to say here. Um, okay, as I sta stated earlier, um, gold confiscation, precious metals confiscation. Well, they confiscated gold in 1933. Um, they've never confiscated silver. Okay, now they took silver out of the coins in 1965. 1964 and older, your silver or your quarters and your dimes were both silver. All right, so uh, they took that out in 1965. But they never, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, if anybody knows out there, I've never heard of them confiscating silver. Okay, gold is what they go after. All right, so. Um, but they've done it numerous times. I think it's three times throughout American history. Um, but you have to remember something, okay? Most people had gold and silver in 1933. So there was a lot more gold to confiscate, in other words. Today, very few people have precious metals. So for the government to come out and say, we're going to need to confiscate gold, doesn't really make any sense now because very few people have gold, okay? So it's a little bit safer today than it was in the past. I mean, you had people in 1933 that were walking around with, you know, gold coins in their pockets. You know, I have a big bill to pay. I'm, you know, $20. I remember my grandfather, um, Bernard Fry, and um, he went to a Bible college, and I think for a year, and he paid his tuition off with one $20 gold piece uh, way back in the day born in the early 1900s but um and i remember him telling that story though just one gold piece one gold coin to pay off his entire college debt uh, <laughs> boy we haven't seen any any uh, changes over the years have we i uh, guess we have pretty bad um but here's another part of the thing of you know laws that are passed especially from tyrannical government and that is you have to have 60% of the people comply to the law in order for it to work. Okay, I'll give you a good example. Here, I think it was this earlier this year or last year, I forget what it was, but they had this 
uh, pistol brace ban thing here in America. And people were supposed to bring in their pistol braces and turn them in by such and such date or you could fail, face prison time. Um, but you know the funny thing? 60% of the people didn't comply. In fact, the vast majority did not comply. And the ATF had to come out and say, well, okay, we aren't going to ban them after all. You know, you can keep them, I guess, and whatever. So um, that was an example of a time when compliance did not work. Hmm. Um, the law didn't come into effect then, did it? No, it didn't. Um, if enough people stand up against the thing and say, no, um, the government, uh, you've proved yourself to be tyrannical and to be very corrupt. Um, I mean, we could write history books on how corrupt our government has been here in America. Um, you don't deserve our guns, or, well, our guns too, excuse me, thinking of other issues, or our gold. No, you're not getting it. Um, so how do you do this thing? Well, you can buy gold with cash and you can hide the gold, okay? Go to a coin shop, precious metal dealer. You can, might have to travel a little bit to find a good one. Um, there aren't that many around. I go to one locally, but it's just kind of an antique coin shop and, and um, he doesn't really have the best setup or whatever, but you know, you can buy the typical gold eagles, silver eagles, um, Canadian maple leaves, gold and silver. Um, he has a few other little things, you know, maybe some junk type silver and, you know, in other words, the 90% silver coins we used to have as our money. Um, but you can buy with cash, okay? Uh, and there's no records made or anything else, okay? Now that works if you're just trying to, you know, slowly, you know, stack up precious metals, that's a good way to do it because there's no record of you having them, all right? And, um, you know, so if you're doing things legally and, and whatever else, well, you can do it that way just because you say, well, I'm not really trusting the government very much at this point in time. Um, you can do it that way. Now, if you are saying, I would actually like to invest most of my wealth into precious metals, well, then I believe... And this is just my opinion. You can disagree. Put it in the comments down below what you think, what you would have to say about this. But I think if you go with a bigger company like SD Bullion or Appmex or there's a bunch of different ones like that, um, where you could put a large amount of money into precious metals. And I think it's good to do that and say, okay, now I have uh, paperwork to prove this whole thing. So, you know, if you would go, let's just say that you buy 1,000 ounces of silver or something. Okay, you bought 1,000 ounces of silver and you got it from SD Bullion or Appmex or one of the others. Okay, $1,000 or 1,000 ounces, excuse me. You have it all on paper and um, you paid, what would that be? Uh, we'll just say it's about $30 an ounce right now you know, and you'd have your premiums, but let's just try to keep this simple. You pay about $40,000, roughly, for the 1,000 ounces of silver, okay? All of a sudden, the banks have been shorting silver for many years now. It's actually the number one thing that the 13 biggest banks are shorting. Um, in other words, they're not allowing, the, they're controlling the price, just to keep it simple. And all of a sudden, they stop doing that. Demand for silver, global demand for silver goes crazy with the new Samsung uh, EV batteries that are made a lot of silver and the cruise missiles that have 500 ounces of silver. And you can watch, by the, by the way, there's a Andy Schechtman interview or two out there where he actually talks about, he talked to a defense contractor who said, yes, you're correct. It is 500 ounces of silver that's used right around there. I think 490 or something like that. So people say, oh, that's not true. That's been debunked. No, it hasn't. Okay, um, again, this whole fact-checking nonsense that came out during the scamdemic, oh, we, we fact-checked it. How did you fact-check it? We, we went to the robber and said, did you rob the bank? The robber said, no, I didn't. And they said, okay, see, it's been debunked. <laughs> Stupid. I, I hate this whole fact-checking thing, like there's some kind of a uh, you know, tribunal or something, and we, if we say that this isn't true, then it, it, it just simply becomes reality or something. It's nonsense. Um, yes, there are, is 
a lot of silver in the defense um, industry and things. So let's just say the, the value of silver goes absolutely bonkers and it goes way up, okay? Um, if that happens, all of a sudden your $40,000 investment, silver goes to $1,000 an ounce. We'll say it goes really crazy, it goes way up, $1,000 an ounce, all right? Well, then you're a millionaire. You just became a millionaire. 1,000 times 1,000, you become a millionaire, all right? So what do you do? Um, you go and you say, I would like to sell this back to whatever dealer or, you know, whatever. I, uh, that might be an issue to who's going to buy it. You know, it might be big um, banks or industry or something would want to buy your silver at that point in time. Okay, well, if you've just been buying it from a local coin shop and all of a sudden you go into the bank and you have a, a check for $1 million from so-and-so precious metal dealer, they're going to look at you and say, hmm, you know, we have some serious questions. But if you have a paper trail there, again, let me know your thoughts, your opinions on this. You have a paper trail there, and you can say, here's the time that I bought it from so-and-so bullion dealer, and uh, this is what I paid. This is the silver market. It went up to this level. That's why I'm a millionaire. Well, there isn't really anything that they can do about that. Now, of course, if uh, Kamala Harris is selected and put in, she's talking about this thing of the, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, uh, something about the, I can't think of how it's worded. Something about the gains, unrealized gains or something tax. And if that happens, then you could be, um, they could make you pay some kind of money or something like this for you know that profit that you made and it would take out a bunch of the money that you would make there but you i mean you'd still make money but i mean it's completely corrupt totally corrupt but at least you would still make some money um so just something to think about if you're just you know talking about a few ounces of gold a few ounces of silver okay but if you're thinking about, you know, I'm going to take money out of my retirement or whatever else, um, well, then you might want to actually go with a actual bullion, you know, dealer and where you can actually get a substantial amount. Um, again, you know, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back to my notes here. Okay. Um, how much of your wealth should be in precious metal? All right. Um, that's another thing to consider. Well, I would say as much as you can afford to sit on and not spend. Okay? Um, if you take all of the wealth that you have, all of your retirement and whatever else, and you put it into precious metals, and then the government comes out and says, we're, we're going to confiscate it, and you say, I'm not selling it. You know, they say, we'll give you, you know, spot value for it or something, or less than spot because we have a crisis here and we need to avert the crisis and we need your help or something to save the country or some weird thing like that. Um, so you need to sell it to us for below spot or something value. Spot, it would be just the, like the metal value uh, without the premiums attached to it. And you say, no, I'm not selling it for that. Well, then you're an illegal whatever. And you say, oh, well, you know, I don't know what happened to my precious metals. They just kind of disappeared. <laughs> and uh, and they say, well, you know, they come and they search your house. They have a search warrant or something. Like, I mean, we're really stretching things here. But just to prove the, the, the worst possible scenario, and they come out and they search, oh, we can't find it. Where did you put it, you know, or something. I lost it. I don't know what happened, you know, or something. Or I sold it. I gave it away to charity or something. And, uh, some poor little boy came walking up and shined my shoes, and I gave him, you know, 20 ounces of gold for doing it or something, <laughs> you know deceive the deceiver or whatever. Uh, again, I'm just trying to prove a point here. Okay, don't take it seriously. Oh, he's advocating lying and whatever. No, I'm just trying to prove a point. All right, but you get, you know, they come and they say, you know, we need to confiscate it. You say, not happening, and you just hide it someplace. Well, then that means you're not going to be spending it and, you know, for a long time. And it might go 10, 20, 30 years or whatever. Um, and I heard stories of people that 
Um, there was a famous story I knew of. I shouldn't say famous, but it, you know, a very interesting story that I knew of down in Pennsylvania when I was uh, living there, born and raised there. And there was a guy that came in, was talking to a friend of mine that worked at a hardware store. And, um, and he was telling the story about how that they were uh, working on this old house and they had all this old insulation in the attic and they went up and they were going to put all new insulation in, the, in these people's attic of this old house. And it was an old couple that had lived there for years and they both died. They didn't have any children or anything else. And um, so these construction guys, you know, and then a new family bought the house from the old couple. These construction guys went up and they were vacuuming up all of the old insulation out of the attic, you know, and they were, and they'd hear, and they were, something was getting sucked up in with this insulation. And they were thinking, I wonder what this is. And so they got back to the shop, opened up their shop vacs, and with all the old insulation in it, and they're dumping it out. And here it was a whole bunch of gold coins that they sucked up out of the insulation of this place. And what had happened, obviously, is this older couple had lived there through the Great Depression and they took all their gold coins and they stuck them upstairs in the attic and just sat on their gold coins and said, you know, we'll just keep them till we can sell them again. And then I guess they just forgot about it. And this guy said, you know, I put a down payment on a new house uh, with the gold that I made from that whole situation. So pretty interesting story, but it illustrates my point. I would only invest as much in precious metals as you'd be willing to not spend. But the whole point is here, you're looking to have an inheritance for your children. So you're not, it's not a matter of, I want to get rich quick here. I mean, we are at the end of the dollar, the dollar crashing. So you will technically, you know, it's make some money more than likely. I mean, gold is setting new records almost all the time. Um, I think it's, I'm not sure what it is this morning, but yesterday it was, uh, I think $2,588 or something like that. And in some odd sense. So probably it's going to be hitting 2,600 within the next day or two. I would say maybe, maybe not might go up or down, but, um, when they cut interest rates here on Wednesday, um, coming up here in a few days, um, <laughs> Who knows what gold's going to go to then uh, when they bring interest rates down inflation goes up and the price of gold goes up with it because the dollar is crashing okay a few more points to say here all right um another point that you need to think about is the future is central bank digital currencies like it or not it's pro prophesied in scripture that eventually becomes the mark of the beast system uh it's going to be a very bad future um so, you know, well, I, I'm just going to keep my money in dollars and things. I think it's safest with that. Ew, um, that's not really that great of an idea um, because the dollars are going to be going away. Now, you can, again, short term, you could have, if you have a bunch of cash or something like that, well, people are going to get desperate when uh, hyperinflation really comes in and there's going to be a lot of things that will trigger even more hyperinflation. Again, America's under God's judgment. Things aren't going to be good. And, um, and so uh, as the dollar crashes, you're going to be able to buy certain things and, you know, make some money at that. But to say I'm going to hold on to dollars long term, not really that great of an idea. So precious metals would be a good idea, in my opinion, you do what you want, um, I think, for the future. But ultimately, it's going to be a central bank digital currency that we're dealing with. Okay? Um, but another way to look at this whole thing is you can have precious metals as a um, you know, part of a barter economy between patriotic people. Okay? People that are saying we don't want... Um, to deal with central bank digital currency because it's going to be a long fight that these um, banking devils are looking at. All right, that's what it's going to be. You're going to see um, people resisting it and we need to resist it because 
the central bank digital currency is not the real danger. It's the social credit score that's hooked up to the central bank digital currency. That's where the danger comes in. Because if they don't like what you're saying, they just simply cut off your money supply. And at that point in time, if I go to a local farm stand or something that I would know or um, anything, I need another vehicle or something, and I want to go and I want to buy another vehicle, well, um, would you take this useless cash that's, you know, been so devalued now, uh, would you take this? Uh, no. Um, hey, here's a gold coin or two for your vehicle there. Well, you know, there's I can find ways to use that or whatever. I mean, people that are intelligent are always going to understand that there's value with gold and silver. It's the people that have rocks for brains. Uh, they talk about gold being a yellow rock, which it's not. But they're saying that because they have rocks for brains up here. And, um, you know, any one of those people, if they saw a bunch of gold coins, like they were outside someplace and they saw gold coins laying, or even gold nuggets, any one of those people would just jump on them and, oh, oh I'm rich, I'm rich. So people are deceptive. They're liars. Um, these uh, digital currency people, that's usually who does it. But... Um, and then last point I want to make here is the possibility of uh, selling your precious metals to another country. That's something that did not exist back in the 1930s uh, when they confiscated gold back during the Great Depression. You couldn't just get on the internet and put your coins up for sale and sell them to somebody in Russia or China or something like that. So there will be some global trade type of things that could happen that you could sell your precious metals if America is locked down or, you know, you could find some way to do it. Uh, precious metals will always have value. Always. I don't care what anybody says about that. Um, there's a lot of really stupid people out there that try to, um, they're trying, you know, they're, they're basically, let me say it this way, okay, just to try to explain things. Um, in the spiritual realm, you have people that are influenced by the Holy Spirit of God. When you are saved, when you are born again, the Holy Spirit comes in and renews your mind. Now you understand things on a spiritual level. All right? And the Holy Spirit can reveal things to lost people as well. He doesn't indwell them. But I've seen many times where lost people will make a statement that is a statement of truth that could have only come from the Holy Spirit inspiring that statement. All right? And that oftentimes leads people to think, wow, I have these profound thoughts, therefore I must be right with God. Well, no, the Holy Spirit can use you to, to speak truth, but you need to have a personal relationship with God. Take it to the next level in your search for truth. Okay, the Holy Spirit can move in. It doesn't mean you have to go to church and give 10% of your tithe and all the other things that man makes up. Okay, read the Bible, you'll see that, that stuff's not in there. Okay, uh, nobody went to church, nobody gave 10% of their tithe, nobody wore Sunday best, you know, and whatever else. Um, that stuff is all man-made, all right? You can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But the flip side of the coin is, if there are people that are inspired by the Holy Spirit, there are also people that are inspired by devil spirits, spirits of that are deceptive and that are wicked and evil. And... Um, we are spiritual beings, and you can be influenced by certain things. Thoughts can come into your mind, and of course, we see that with our leadership right now. Uh, there's a lot of these people that you think, what they're doing and what they're proposing, this isn't even logical anymore. What are they, why are they saying this stuff? It's because devil spirits are influencing them, and of course, you can pick those up through a lot of fraternal orders and you know, things where you have people trying to get in touch with them. There are people that actually do that. You know, the famous quote from Manly Palmer Hall talking about high-level Freemasons, and he says about how that, you know, when the Master Mason receives this special thing or whatever, that the seething energies of Lucifer are, you know, basically his to command. Um, so the, a lot of the Freemasons are trying to get in touch with Lucifer. And the tricky thing about Lucifer another name for Satan, is that he knows the Bible very well and he knows a lot of very deep, profound spiritual truth. And so Lucifer will actually come out and say truth at different times. Whenever you read um, 
about Satan in the Bible, he's actually saying things that are spiritual. Okay, he's quoting scripture. Now he'll misquote scripture, which is interesting. Change some of the wording. That's what the devil does. But um, and he does it on purpose, not just lapse in memory, uh, misquotes it by mistake. The devil will actually change the scriptures, get people to turn against the scriptures, um, come out with their own faults and their own feelings. But there are people that are influenced by satanic spirits, and they will say things that are um, not true. But then you have people that are actually influenced by the Holy Spirit of God, and they will speak truth. And so all, all people are controlled by um, or controllable by the spirit realm. Just don't, don't forget that, okay? Uh, and there's a whole lot more I could say about that. But this video is going long enough. I just wanted to say some things here, get some stuff out. Could the government confiscate precious metals? Yes. Is it likely? No because there are very few people that even have precious metals. And I mean, you get up into the wealthy people. I remember hearing um, James Anderson, I think from SD Bullion the one time, and he was talking about this. And I think he said that the wealthiest people in America, they're, the, the part of their wealth that's allocated to precious metals is something like less than 1%. So, uh, and, I mean, I'm talking people with $50 million or more and less than 1% of their wealth is in precious metals. Um, again, understand the way that you get wealthy in the modern world is by using debt to you know, create more wealth. Um, and I don't agree with that at all. I think that that's, um, I think it's not the right way to, to become wealthy. But what can you do when you don't have God on your side? You know? um, but anyhow, I'll uh, call it quits there and need to get to the office. I have a bunch of things to, to do today. So Luther has joined me now. He's out there on the driveway going down towards the road. Luther, hey, come on, Luther. His hearing's not the best. You know, here he comes. You know, if it's a, uh, sometimes he comes. Good boy, thank you. Other times he doesn't, <laughs> but okay. That's going to be it. Um, hopefully I've given you some things to think about. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Don't, don't bother writing, wasting my time with the whole, it's a yellow rock. Just shut up and go someplace else. You know, there's no nice way for me to put it. So just shut up, okay? I'm not interested in what you had to say you don't believe that gold is worth anything, then don't watch the video, all right? I realize you don't anyhow. You know, you just want to write an idiot comment, but uh, just don't waste my time. I'm just going to delete those comments because they're just annoying. So, uh, but that will be it. There's going to be a major pivotal thing happening this week, and I do believe the precious metals is, you know, will go up as a result of the interest rates being cut, unless they pull off some kind of really weird thing from now till then, which... Our government's capable of anything. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.